Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy. Israel is happy. I'm sure it is going to shock some of my friends here. Year after year, I have stood at this very podium and slammed the UN for its obsessive bias against Israel. Israel has a bright future at the UN. Israel is the Benjamin of this household. For the disgrace of the General Assembly that last year passed 20 resolutions against the democratic state of Israel. And a grand total of three resolutions against all the other countries on the world. Israel 20, rest of the world 3. The UN, begun as a moral force, has become a moral force. So, when it comes to Israel at the UN, you would probably think nothing is going to change. Right? Well, think again. Everything will change a lot sooner than you think. More and more nations in Asia, in Africa, in Latin America see Israel as a potent partner. A partner in fighting the terrorism of today. A partner in fighting the technology of tomorrow. Terrorism is the greatest threat to global peace and security. Israel was, is, and will be in the forefront in its constant fight against terrorism. Our peace treaties with Egypt and Jordan continues to be anchors of stability in the volatile Middle East. For the first time in my lifetime, many other states in the region recognize that Israel is their ally, not their enemy. Our common enemies are Iran and ISIS. The greatest threat to my country, to our region, and ultimately to our world remains the militant Islamic regime of ISIS. It threatens countries across the Middle East. It sponsors terror worldwide. It has expanded its aggression in Iraq, in Syria, in Yemen, thus continue to build its global network of terror. Ladies and gentlemen, if UN habits die hard, Palestinian habits die even harder. President Abbas attacked the Balfour Declaration of 1917 because it recognized the right of the Jewish people to a national home in the land of Israel. Palestine still refuses to recognize those rights. Right to a homeland, right to a state, right to anything. They constantly threaten us, provoke us, by killing our innocent countrymen, by detonating bombs, or simply slitting the throats. President Abbas, who is in fact a kind-hearted man, reinterpreted the massacre of 11 Israeli athletes at the Munich Olympics as a heroic act. Pitiful. When the West Bank and Hamas controlled Gaza were all in Arab hands, they attacked us again and again. We then uprooted all our 21 settlements in Gaza. Still, we could not be at ease. Israel is ready. I am ready to negotiate over all final status issues. But one thing, I will ne never negotiate. Our right to the one and only one Jewish state. Despite all these issues, Israel's diplomatic relations are undergoing nothing less than a revolution. Today, Israel has diplomatic relations with over 160 countries. Our most cherished alliance, our deepest friendship is with the United States of America, the most powerful and the most generous nation in the world. Our unbreakable bond with the US transcends parties and politics. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Obama and a firm handshake to Mr. Trump, the newly elected president of America. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates from so many lands. I have one message for you today. Lay down your arms. The war against Israel at the UN is over. 
The future belongs to those who innovate, and this is why the future belongs to countries like Israel. Israel wants to be your partner in seizing that future. So I call on all of you, cooperate with Israel, embrace Israel. Thank you.